In this video, I'm going to give you five ways to optimize your home assistant setup. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech and today we're going to be having a look at optimizing Home Assistant. I'll give you five easy ways to do it and if you stick around to the end I might even give you a bonus one. So, let's get going. My first tip to optimize Home Assistant is to ditch the Pi, or at least the SD card. Now I do say this with pain in my heart, I've just ditched my Pi for the first time in two and a half years for a desktop computer um, because of reliability. It was the second, no, it was the third time that I had an SD card fail on me and I just kept going back because it was cheap, it was easy, it just needed reflashing. But it's just not worth it. If you see, the quicker you can ditch your Pi and move on to some slightly better hardware, the much better time you will have. Now if you can't ditch your Pi for whatever reason, or if you don't want to, maybe, then at least ditch the SD cards. There are plenty of people out there who've done tutorials on how to boot Home Assistant from an SSD via USB onto a Pi. I would highly recommend doing that at least to start with. I think at some point you will find that the Pi can't quite give you enough oomph, so you will want, so you will want to move over to a slightly beefier computer. Um, but I have absolutely no problem with trying out this sort of thing on a Pi. That's kind of what a Pi is for, for trying things out. But if you're getting serious, if you start adding things like cameras, a lot of automations, that sort of thing, then you're going to want a beefier thing and you're not going to want it to die on you, like mine did. So point number two is for Zigbee users. If you're a Zigbee user, then you could be using any sort of Zigbee bridge. I would highly recommend ditching a wireless bridge for a wired one, either via USB or Ethernet. Um, but the problem with the wireless ones is they have a Wi-Fi chip and they have a Zigbee chip and they go bang, 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 bang. And that doesn't work too well. So ditch your Zigbee controller for a wired one. I'm just about to swap over to a Conbi. Um, so I would recommend that as an option. Um, but if you are doing that, don't plug it straight into your computer right in the middle of your server rack next to your Wi-Fi access point because you'll have the same problem of signals going bang, 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 bang. So get a USB extender or an Ethernet cable extender or an antenna extender if it's got an external antenna and stick it somewhere else. Stick it on the side, stick it outside. Don't stick it outside. Stick it on the side of your rack, stick it further away from your rack, stick it on the ceiling if I, for all I care. Just stick it away from your access points because that will really clear up some Zigbee interference. And jumping on from that, I suppose, is point number three, which is fix your Wi-Fi. If you're anything like absolutely everyone, your Wi-Fi sucks. And that's because your ISP gives you a cheap router and you plug it in and that's fine. And it's not really fine. Your ISP router is rubbish. No matter what they claim, it's rubbish. And then they go and give you a mesh system, which doesn't quite work. It does things, it kind of does things, it's still actually quite rubbish. Um, so ditch that if you can. Get something like a Google Nest mesh system or a Linksys mesh system if you can. If you want to go all out, then go for a Unify system and you won't have any problems there. Um, but if nothing else, check your Wi-Fi itself and make sure that you're using the right channels so you're not interfering with neighbors or your Zigbee, of course. Zigbee and Wi-Fi are on the same frequency. So if they're on similar channels or overlapping or close to each other, then you're going to have problems there. If you're going to, if you've got multiple access points, for example, a separate reader for a guest network, make sure that's on a separate channel. If you can, use the 2.4 gig and the 5 gig spectrum, because that will just clear up the 2.4 gig for your smart home stuff when your nicer expensive devices such as your phones and your laptop is close by, and that will help. But equally, if you've got a really bad router, then your smart home device will really struggle to connect to it if it's got, if it hasn't got split SSID. So think about splitting your SSIDs as well. 
And once you've r fixed your Wi-Fi, sorted your Zigbee and ditched your Pi, we can then actually go into Home Assistant. And what I'm going to recommend you do in Home Assistant is remove anything you don't need. Now, this could be debugging logs that you set up ages ago to fix something and no longer need. It could be your history. You don't need to keep a history of all your devices for six weeks after they've happened. Who really cares that your motion detector was triggered at 11.27am on the 17th of January? Nobody. So ditch history that you don't need. Ditch any old integrations that you're not using anymore. Ditch any lines of code that you're not using anymore in your configuration. And also ditch any automations that you're not using, or at least turn them off. Now my last point is an obvious one. Back it up. And I know it's obvious because nobody does it. And everyone forgets to do it, and everyone thinks they've done it and then they haven't done it. Get a, set up a system where it automatically backs up to your Google Drive or Dropbox or your GitHub every week and life will be so much better. Don't just save a snapshot on your Pi because when your SD card dies, you lose it. So make sure you back it up, you know, off the device that you're using. And kind of alongside that, if you can, test things before you implement them. So if possible, if you're running in a virtual machine or in a virtual world, then have a duplicate Home Assistant instance where you can try the latest firmware, you can try automations, you can try X, Y, and Z before you actually kind of put it onto your main system. Think of it like a beta test and you could test it, but other people in the household don't have to, because the last thing you want to be doing, and again, I speak from experience, is trying something new and taking down all the stuff that was working perfectly fine before. Now, there are the five hints and tips I have for you, but I did say there was a bonus one. And the bonus hint and tip is to learn from your mistakes. Again, sounds really obvious, but I speak from experience. People don't. I burnt it through an SD card three times, and yes, I still went back to the Pi. I failed to make backups three times, and yes, I still go back to not making backups. When my Zigbee died, I just put it back on on the same device, and it still failed. It's so obvious to learn from your mistakes, but the obvious things just need to be told to you sometimes. So make sure you learn from your mistakes, and you don't repeat them. So, five things. Ditch the Pi, or at least the SD card. Move your Zigbee antenna as far away from your Wi-Fi as possible. Fix your Wi-Fi. If you need to split bands, split bands. If you get, can get a better router and mesh network, then do that. If you can go Unify, definitely do that. Remove what you don't need. Get rid of old, any old logs, any old history, any old integrations, any old automations. Cured off. Sometimes it's quite nice to actually just start again. Delete your Home Assistant instance and start again. Copy over, obviously, what you want to copy over, but the act of starting again means that you're not copying everything over, which is quite nice. Number five, of course, back everything up. And back it up off-site, somewhere safe, somewhere secure, somewhere no one else can kill it. And if you can, test new things before you implement them so you've always got a running Home Assistant set up in your house. And then the bonus hint was, of course, to learn from your mistakes and not to repeat them. So there we go. Five ways to optimise your Home Assistant. Make sure you click subscribe and hit the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.